Hey there, I'm Tyler and welcome back to the channel and the Where Are They Now series in which we are going to talk about the obstacle course, the world's greatest swing set, and we're going to talk about that a little bit. You guys haven't seen that. That was actually a commercial we did for General Motors. We had a film crew out here. It was kind of a bizarre situation, um, but good time. So you never really saw that on the typical YouTube channel. So what is going on with these structures? The world's greatest swing set was built four years ago at this point in time. And the obstacle course was built three years ago, and they are both holding up extremely, extremely well. Times have changed, and when we built this, this cost $2,600. That was including the accessories. Now, if you were to go buy that now, it would probably be double that, although lumber prices have stabilized a little bit, so I don't know if they would be that bad. And I do know that the spinny slide over there, which is a seven-foot spinny slide, a lot of people have asked me that, that's been unavailable for quite some time. I would like to think it's because we built so many of the world's greatest swing set, but uh, who knows? So you might have to wait for an alternative for something like that. Um, so there are plans for this. They are a uh, digital download. They're about 52 pages long, highly, highly detailed. And uh, I'm very proud to say that there's been a ton of these swing sets built since I have released the plans, which do have a uh, Rev 2 on them now. There's something that I had to add to the to the tube slide platform over there and i'll show you that in a minute but anyway we have th there's been swing sets built all over the world peru spain um I, I even think we might have had one in the philippines if i remember right and then bunches of them in the united states with many variations if this is too big and too expensive for you i've seen gentlemen that have taken one tower off they've made towers bigger uh, and and this may not be the world's greatest because i have seen some that are even bigger than this one using my plans but it is the world's greatest design for a swing set, I guess, and you can go from there. It was all built out of pressure-treated material. There is no cedar on here. I don't know that I really believe in cedar, seeing seeing past outdoor projects not fare so well. So it's all pressure-treated. I bought all of this at a lumber yard, not at your typical retailer. Uh, in doing that, you get things like the, the deck boards are thicker, better. It's just better quality lumber. And out of out of this whole build, I think we had like one or two two by fours that were kind of wonky and that we were not able to use. Like I mentioned, this was for a General Motors, General Motors commercial. This was just a playhouse that we had here for the kids. They wanted kind of a, a bar area with a sink and a kitchenette in there for the General Motors commercial. So we, we made that for them. And then, like I said, they came and filmed it. Uh, we have the Rogue Engineer outdoor little kitchen built in here and some the windows actually open and at one point in time we had uh flowers fake flowers in the flower pots and a little mailbox on the side but this is the Andura. this was their original Andura panels like i said they originally were smaller so you can kind of see you might be able to see how it's a, a smaller sheet goes from here to here and is about 18 inches tall where now they went to more of like a, a five foot panel so you can cover more space at one time which is nice i do think at one point they were going after something that you could fit back fit in the back of a small car so it was easier to maneuver and you didn't need a truck or something like that anyway the whole point of the world's greatest swing set was it needed a bridge started with that and then built the design around it so the bridge goes from tower to tower on the top and for this tower over here the only way you can get there is by going over the bridge and the point to that was we wanted the kids to have to go all the way around if they wanted to be able to go down the tube slide and then on the underside of the bridge is monkey bars and these monkey bars are pretty high up in the air which is kind of the reason we ended up doing the obstacle course go ahead and show them how high the monkey bars are ethan as you can see we got four swings on here we're able to do various different heights, which is nicest because we have the four of them. I have seen some people build this swing set with a variation uh, of only three swings on there if you want a little bit more room. So like I said, we built this four years ago. It's all pressure treated. After about a year of drying out, we sprayed uh, a product called Ready Seal on it. Um, I've only used it on the Playhouse, the swing set, and the obstacle course. Um, but from what I can tell, I highly recommend Ready Seal. It is a little bit difficult to get your hands on, but it's very easy to apply and it spreads out very well with very, very minimal or no blotching. And it seems to have held up and protected the swing set very well for the three years that it's been on there now. It's probably getting time to do another coat of that, but we probably have one more year out of it. As I mentioned, this is a seven foot tube slide. 
I did need to lower the platform to be able to get to that. So that's what this little majigger is right here. If you needed to jump down to a five foot tube side, which may be available, you could lower that even more. And this is the only thing that I have changed in the plan so far is adding this section, this cross section down here because we were getting the entire tube slide platform to uh, bend down. It was sinking down a little bit right here. So in adding that, I was able to jack it up, add that on the bottom, and we are all well and good with that structure so far. So the rock wall, which is a pressure treated piece of plywood, has uh, a little bit of mold on the bottom, but no rot. So that's in, in good shape still. I, I wouldn't do anything different, even though on the obstacle course, I did do the actual, you know, little rock pieces on the deck boards there. Um, over here, we have the, the, the weed whacker eaten away at the wood. I don't know if you can see that. I have seen some very expensive options for wrapping that kind of thing in so you don't wreck your weed whacker, but they're like super expensive, like 10 bucks a post or something like that. So if you guys have any ideas or any, any great tricks for how to protect those posts for something like that, let me know in the comments below. Everyone would appreciate uh, a trick or two. So you can see we got the rope over there from the lower tower. And that mechanism that holds the rope is something that we've gotten a lot of questions on as well. In the plans, you're not going to get this structure. It's just going to be a fireman pole. And there was a couple reasons for that. That is an impossibly difficult angle to draw using SketchUp. So I spent way too much time doing that and, and didn't have any success. And ropes and kids, I didn't really want to sell that in the plans. Didn't want anyone to get hurt on the rope. So you guys get a fireman pole if you purchase the plans. You can figure that out. I've seen some people do a uh, simpler mechanism than the angles that I did. Like I said, very difficult to draw in SketchUp and uh, yeah, impossible to transfer over to the plan. So if you wanted something like that, that it was a little bit different, you can do that on your own. But what else? Again, plans available down in the description below if you want them. It was all pressure treated. And what else would I do? What would I do different on this guy? I do think that owning a tractor now and having an auger, I would put this on piers if I was to do this again. It has only sank about an inch, maybe two. And uh, we had a really, really wet stretch of summer this year. And we've, we've gone through some really wet springs with this and it hasn't hasn't really moved. So having the machines, I would do it again. It does cost more money to do that, but I don't think it's strictly necessary. I think it depends on your location. I have a buddy down the road that built this. He built it without the, the piers or blocks, and he immediately had to jack it up and put blocks under it. He's just a flatter, wetter property. Uh, recently, we had a tornado and 80 mile an hour winds, not at the same time, in, in about the same two week stretch. And um, his yard was a lake. Ours was okay. So he's just a wetter area. But to, anyway, speaking of all that wind, this thing, uh, no problem. People have asked me if it should be bolted, bolted down somehow so that wind doesn't affect it. But again, we got 80 miles an hour wind. It doesn't move at all. And let's move on to the obstacle course. So why did we do the obstacle course? The obstacle course was kind of a, uh, a collaboration that I did with Rigid, who sponsored me at the time. Uh, this was like a Father's Day build giveaway. So they paid me to give the plans away for free when we did this. And we got hundreds, if not thousands of people downloading the plans. It, it was a good time. The thoughts behind the design for this one was we wanted a lower monkey bars. As you can see, the kids are much lower to the ground than they were on the world's greatest swing set. So we wanted to start with that. And then I really liked this island idea that you can see right there, that it's kind of like you see at the, the big jungle gym at the, at the public schools or whatever. So they can walk across that. They got a platform for picnics or just sightseeing on the top there. And then you got the rock wall with the true rocks. I just got these on Amazon somewhere. Mounted on, again, the deck boards from the lumber yard. And then we got kind of a whole ladder section on this side and a rope ladder right there for them to practice climbing up a rope ladder, which is never very easy. This guy was surprisingly expensive. So like I said, the swing set was about $2,600, $2,700 with all the accessories and all the wood. This was like $900 for all the wood. There's quite a bit of, quite a bit of wood on there um, building that structure. So I think that's why it uh, surprisingly cost. If you look closer over here, this is a 2x6, and it's almost 
almost all the way into the ground. That's like four and a half inches into the ground. This is a much wetter area over here, uh, which is why we put the swing set over there. But right here does puddle up with the water and we get a ton of rain. So this area has sank a little more, but the good news is it has sank kind of evenly. So we haven't had to do anything about it. That's a smaller structure. I don't think I would ever pour that on piers in case we wanted to move it. And if we do want to just kind of pop it over a couple inches, we can very easily do that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this first episode of Where Are They Now? We covered the world's greatest swing set. We talked about the obstacle course, and we very briefly touched on the commercial we did for General Motors, which I can link that down in the description below if you wanted to watch it. It's only like a minute long. It's pretty well edited. It's pretty cool. We had the film crew, like I said, and we had a new General Motors car out there when they were releasing the new Acadia. It was good fun. The local hardware store was all involved. It was a lot of fun. If you guys would like to build some of these, the plans for them are in the description below. You will not be disappointed by the plans. They are highly detailed. They've been refined over the last couple of years, and many, many people have built them to great success. I'm DIY Tyler, and you guys have a good one.